Everybody and welcome to the future game show Spring Showcase. My name is Samantha Bayart, though you may know me best as Baldur's Gate 3's lovable hothead Karlak. Fortunately, for the sake of my infernal engine and the fate of this fair studio, I'm taking leave from the front lines of the Blood War for the next 90 minutes to present today's show. A veritable, a veritable feast Benjamin. of trailers. Yes, Samantha. What did I tell you in rehearsals? Don't cut you off. And what just happened? I immediately cut you, you off. You immediately cut me off. You've disgraced yourself, you know that. Yes. I'm sorry. Well, go on then, introduce yourself. I'm Ben Starr, and you might know me from the popular social media skits I film alone in my front room, or perhaps my role as the pectorally blessed icon Clive Rossfield in Final Fantasy XVI. Beyond the endearing back and forth... It's not endearing. ...agree to disagree, mm. Sam and I are here today to get you up to speed on the most exciting video games of the moment. So whether you're watching on a live stream or in the Albatross Theatre at PAX East, hi, stick close to Mama K. And Mama C. And we'll get through this one together. Let's kick things off with our first trailer. And guess what? It's a world premiere. That was your first look at Death Sprint 66, a PvP arcade racer coming in 2024. Now, before you all Death Sprint to your Steam wish lists, let me save you some time. We have our very own Spring Showcase Steam page, which you can find by searching Future Game Show on Steam. This is where you can find and wish list every game featured in the show. And after the show, you can head to the FGS YouTube channel where you'll be able to re-watch all the juicy trailers and see what bonus content our editorial team has been cooking up. Plus, there'll be plenty of articles to read about the games we've covered on gamesradar.com. OK, I think it's about time we gave the good people what they want. Me with no clothes on again. No, not that. Me with more clothes on. That makes no sense. Next up, we've got a brand new trailer for a game that's already had hundreds of thousands of you smashing that wish list button. This is Zucosis. Talk about a graveyard shift. 
stop a malicious parasite from infecting the animal kingdom in zoocosis, which is coming to PC later in 2024. Now, we've got a game that has the fingerprints of its developers all over it. Because everything is made from clay. Ben, I swear to Bahamut. Here's an exciting update on Harold Halibut. Darling Arna, when the ship crashed, I half wondered if life as we knew it would collapse in on itself as well. It seemed like the pressure of the ocean surrounding us was pressing through the ship's hull. And I wondered how I, how any of us, would find a new way to keep going on. There aren't many people I can talk to without feeling inferior. Oh, thanks. <laughs> no, I, I didn't mean like that. You just... You're not a Jimmy Judger, you know? You seem to just accept. Hmm. I try. It could be worse. But there must be more. More to life. Sorry to put the burden on you, Harold, but you're the next best man for the job. I... yes! I mean, yes. Finally, players can dive into the stop-motion world of Harold Halibut on PC, PlayStation and Xbox on April 16th. Let's keep this party going with a developer diary from the team behind Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn. I'm Matthew Woods. I'm animation director on the Flintlock. Flintlock is a souls light RPG where you play as Noor with your companion Enki, a little fox character, taking on great gods, building on from Ashen, we've tried to go more Souls Light, so we do that by increasing the mobility options and increasing the pace of combat. We're trying to make things more dynamic and hopefully make it more accessible to new players to the Souls genre as well as players from action RPGs. Um, the combat in Flintlock is all rhythm-based, um, which from animations I mentioned you'd be able to feel the rhythm through the through the animation. So every nine frames is like a beat. So you're being able to make sure that the, the player can understand when the next attack's gonna come and we have react accordingly. I think my favorite animation for Nora is just like her basic moveset, combining her axe attacks with her gun attacks, and then also mixing that in with strafing with rifles. Um, some of the traversal options in game would be like jumping, double jumping, dodging, air dodging, sliding down hills, inky rift traveling, and being able to like chain between those. Once you get an enemy down to enough health in a fight, then you can execute a glory kill, either axe or pistol. It's good to find out with the glory kills, they're usually the more like, complicated choreographed moves, and the ones where you get to take control of the camera to really control the framing of the action as well as well at times. We definitely wanted Enki to feel like he was a companion alongside you as you navigate the navigate the world, doing all of your jumping and your sliding. So trying to keep him in frame to slide alongside you or jump alongside you.
Love a little combat companion, I bet they'd be best mates with Torgal. Flintlock is coming to PlayStation, Xbox and PC in summer 2024. Sam, I have two mm. questions for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why have you left me? I'm lonely. And what's up next? No comment. And um, next up, we have a Souls-like that casts you as a masked warrior in a world trapped in an eternal play. Here's a closer look at gameplay from Enotria, the last song. An eternity it spent playing out in the tortured halls of my mind. Mentors, friends and lover alike turn against you. Whatever end we meet, it has been a delight to compose the song of change together. Enotria The Last Song is coming to PlayStation 5, Xbox and PC via Epic Game Store on August 21st, 2024. The Constructors is up next, a city builder where you design the neighbourhood of your dreams. Let's take a look. Dust off your hard hats, because The Constructors is coming to PC in Q2 2024. OK, let's down tools and hand things over to the developers of Tenebris Somnia, an 8-bit survival horror game with live-action cutscenes. Pillows at the ready. My name is Andres Bordi, and I'm a film director from Argentina. I'm also a game developer. 
The game I am working on right now is called Tenebris Somnia. It's an old-fashioned survival horror game like Resident Evil or Silent Hill or Fatal Frame. But the catch is that in certain moments you have a cutscene and the cutscene is suddenly a live action. The original idea for the game came while playing the independent horror game Faith by Erdorf. And I said, okay, let's do like a Nintendo game and a movie. In every horror movie, every horror game, when you see the monster is a bald guy or girl, big teeth, I mean white eyes or black eyes, naked, very thin, very tall. It's always the same. It got to be a cliche. So we have to really th think how to make things different and unique. Uh, so what you are seeing right now is the behind the scenes of the filming, of the live action segments. When you make real film, you make the whole thing. You have the beginning, the middle and the end. But here it's like you're filming small parts of the story, separated. And the thing that glues them together is the game, the gameplay. I really have to be sure of, of what I'm making because I'm kind of the only one that really understands what's going on in the shooting. When you're playing the game and you see everything in pixels, you don't really see her face, for example. And suddenly you see the actress in like real close-up. It makes you want more. At the end of the thing, it's a love story. Anyone can understand. There's magic, there's monsters, but the important thing is that you understand the love story and anyone can understand a love story. For the moment, we only have a playable demo, which is on Steam. Tenebris Somnia will be out on Steam sometime around 2025. You can follow us on Twitter to see some updates of the game. Yeah, I'm going to head back over to be by your side for no reason whatsoever. Thank you, Cyborg Studios, for reuniting us. And for that spine-chilling glimpse of Tenebris Somnia, which is coming to PC in 2025. But if you can't wait that long, a playable demo is available right now. If you've been keeping up with all things Future Games Show on social media, you'll know this broadcast is currently streaming live at PAX East in the Albatross Theatre as part of the official schedule. If you're there in person, hello. If you're not there in person, ignore what I just said. Which was... Exactly. Mm -hmm. You might even see us wandering around the halls or standing behind your back. Hiding under your chair. Playing with your hair. Longing for the unbridled thrill of human contact for the first time in years. Finally being loved. Metatextuality aside, this next video will give you the lowdown on what's happening at PAX East over the coming days. PAX East is taking place as we speak and runs until March the 24th. If you aren't there yourself, check out twitch.tv slash PAX to keep up to date on all the show-related news. Back to it now, and we've got a new trailer for Dustborn, a road trip adventure game where you chart the divided states of America. Nearly 4,000 miles on roads less traveled to a place we've never heard of in service of a shadowy employer. Welcome to Betty's Diner. I'm pretending we're on a weekend road trip. I'm not on the run. Normal procedure. Let's not give them a reason to detain us. Friends even know your what you do? Using your box? I'm not going anywhere. Stop it. 
Stand down, officers. Oh, come on. Look at the fun we're having together. We're the refugees. Hold the bus up. We walk among you. Not dragging us into this would have been helpful. We're right behind you. But if we keep fighting, we won't Rather make it through the Republic. Here's some more powerful words for you. Dustborn is coming to PlayStation, Xbox and PC later this year. And we've got more to share about Dustborn in the official Future Games show post-show. So make sure you stick around. Sam, come with me. How do you feel about cocoons? Cocoons? Yeah, you hmm. know, a safe, quiet place to be nurtured. Synonymous with butterflies and the film from 1985. Um. Well, our next game is a cosmic horror metroidvania! Wait, what's happening? You'll see. Product not yet rated. Void Rort is coming to PC and Nintendo Switch in 2024. Make sure it's on your wish lists. You know, Sam, we deserve a pat on the back. Mm. We've stayed on track so far. Full steam ahead, if you know what I mean. You're right. Though I think the writers may have over-engineered the lead into our next game, don't you think? Just a bit. <laughs> Choo choo choose your destiny in Unreal 2 back on track. Wishlist it now as it's coming to Steam Early Access later this year. Okay, who wants a release date trailer? All of you? Yes, even you, Colin from Gateshead. Well, there's good news because we've got a good one for an open world survival crafting game. That's right, only a week to go. Omega Crafter is coming to Steam Early Access on March 28th. Up next is Ascendant Infinity, a squad-based FPS where players duke it out and extract resources while fending off murderous snails, amongst other things. Bring some salt. Yeah. 
please tell me we're keeping score. Ascendant Infinity is coming to PC, and you can find out how to sign up for the beta by heading to www.ascendant.com. Turn out your pockets, Ben. No, not again. I don't have anything. So I don't ha Okay, fine, you can have one thing, and that one thing will be my phone. Thank you. Later this year, the Future Games Show will be delivering a showcase focused on mobile games. So to give you a taste of what's to come, here's a world premiere. Oh, uh, it was a bit about mobile games. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so am I gonna get, am I gonna get that back or is it, am I just... <laughs> Foundation Galactic Frontier! <sighs> Foundation Galactic Frontier is launching first on iOS and Android, and you can look out for more info about it and our mobile showcase in the coming months. OK, as we all know by now, the Future Game Show has always celebrated the most exciting upcoming games and... Da, 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 da. From 2024, we're starting a future game show ones to watch yearbook to keep track of what we're most excited about. These games are handpicked by the future game show team and represent what they believe will be the talk of the town come award season. And of course, no yearbook is complete without hyper specific awards. For example, most likely to win the hearts of the nation while being extremely handsome, that would be me. Yeah or most likely to pick up a short king and throw them over their shoulder. Also me, with prep time. I, th I think they get the picture. Mm. So please join us in celebrating our first entry into this prestigious album, a psychological sequel with eye-popping graphics to boot. Sanua Saga Hellblade 2 enters our future game show Wants to Watch 2024 yearbook a whopping seven years since the launch of Hellblade Sanua's Sacrifice. A story-driven action-adventure game from Cambridge developers Ninja Theory, Hellblade is memorable for its myth-infused world and unique approach to psychological horror. Protagonist Sanua suffers from psychosis, represented by a cacophony of binaural voices commenting on her every move. Auditory hallucinations known in-game as the Furies. Can you smell their fear? Yeah, no, yeah. Death is coming. Look at the bones. Death is coming. Look at the bones. That's going to be you. That's going to be yeah. everyone. Following its electrifying debut at the Game Awards in 2019, which involved plenty of hauntingly animated chanting, Hellblade 2 quickly shot to the top of our ones to watch list here at the Future Game Show. Sanua seems to have found herself in command of an army of warriors in the sequel and is planning to bring the fight back to the Vikings who raided her village and killed her lover. 
The Furies also haunt Sunua in the second game, taunting Sunua about looming death and the fate of those around her as she strives to rebel against tyranny in 10th century Iceland. As well as thrilling set pieces full of nervous exploration and close shaves, Hellblade 2 features an expanded combat system. We've seen Sunua with a sword in hand, dealing savage finishes, blocking brutal strikes and dodging supernatural streams of flames. Climbing and caving through difficult environments also play a part in the experience, augmented by eye-popping Unreal Engine 5 visuals. Fortunately for all of us, we won't have to wait too long to lose ourselves to this extremely exciting narrative. Sunua's saga Hellblade 2 is set to launch on May 21st, 2024, and is coming to Xbox Series X and PC. Senua's Saga Hellblade 2 is coming to Xbox and PC on May 21st, 2024. It's the first game to enter our fancy little yearbook with more to come later on in the show. Let's switch gears now and check in with our friends at ES Digital Games, who have not one or two, but three upcoming games to show you. Rin Delora, the whole syndicate is looking for you, and I found you first. Your father instructed me to play this message for you. Do you want to hear it? A message from Dad? I can't believe you knew him! I was hoping you would know where he went. <sighs> I don't. We all used to call him Stormwalker. Where is Rin Delora now? Kill the rebel girl and bring Rin Delora directly to me. It was supposed to be a routine mission. But something went terribly wrong. This is not the end. I will get to the truth, no matter what. From far off, and in close range, the alchemist battles the strange. Thank you to ES Digital for the update on Awaken Astral Blade, Sky of Tides, and Battlejuice Alchemist. Go get them on your wish lists. No Rest for the Wicked is the next game from Ori developers Moon Studios. So let's throw it over to the team to see what we can expect from this genre-bending action RPG when it enters early access in April. Hey, I'm Thomas Mahler. I'm the creative director at Moon Studios. Hey, I'm Gennady, and I'm a production and technical director, and both of us are the founders of Moon. We are working on a new project, which is called No Rest for the Wicked. It's basically just my dream project, right? It's the action RPG that I always wanted to play and wanted to play for 20 years now. We're trying to create one of the best combat systems on the market. We also want to completely change how exploration is done, right? That you're not just walking around on a randomly generated flat plane. Combine that with the multiplayer aspect, combine that with all these quote unquote social elements of like building at the town and housing and farming and all of those things. It's the kind of game that I always wanted to see uh, somebody making, but because they didn't make it, we are making it now.
the big thing for us to tell people is that the more you would look into No Rest for the Wicked, uh, the more you would understand that what we're trying to do is kind of create our own mix. So we will look at any particular genre and we would take the elements from this genre that we are excited about. We put it all together into one game and then we iterate on it. So we might take, you know, combat inspirations from the Soul series, Monster Hunter, animation commit driven combat, but also fighting games, things that have uh, combos, things that have special moves, you know, and, and we try to make it in tune it in, the, in our own way. Then we look at things like exploration, you know, interconnected, multifaceted, dense level design that encourages retraversal and, and discovering the world. So it's really not one game in particular we're trying to, um, you know, necessarily follow. It's we're just inspired by all of these different um, elements from all of these different games. We put it together and uh, try to grow it and make it into the most perfect version it can be. No Rest for the Wicked is coming to early access on Steam on April 18th. That was the latest on No Rest for the Wicked, which will be available via Steam early access on April 18th and is coming to PlayStation and Xbox. And we've got even more exclusive details about that one in the post, show. Definitely stick around for that. OK, up next is a new trailer for Holstein, a psychological shooter where you swap seamlessly between a top-down and third-person perspective. Shit's last! Give me more. Masz pan chociaż jakąś furę albo coś? Po bojnie to tam był biedny. Czego ty znasz w tym bojnie? Holston is coming to PlayStation, Xbox, Switch and PC when it's ready. We've got your first look at EV2 next, a futuristic shooter where you battle against otherworldly creatures in souped-up mech suits. Among the ruins of a shattered Earth, humanity rallies against an overwhelming invader, waging a war for survival. Using powerful suits, humanity suddenly stands a chance against a mighty foe. Gear up. Battle to win. Earn great rewards and save humanity. Forge alliances and fight for glory. Join the fight now. EV2 is coming to PC in early 2025. Huddle up, fellow RPG fans. Now, I understand the long-awaited sequel to Dragon's Dogma is coming out in a matter of hours, and the excitement levels are off the chits of hearts. Not to make the 12-year wait any more excruciating, but our friends at Capcom have sent us a fiery trailer to prepare you for launch. In a realm of fantasy and fate, you've existed before. As a chosen hero bestowed with immense power, a nefarious wielder of great magic, a conqueror of monsters. Now is the time to take your place among the worthy. Forge bonds. 
gather allies. Fulfill your destiny. Go forth, Arisen. Follow thy heart to seek the truth. By the flames. That was the launch trailer for Dragon's Dogma 2, which is out tomorrow, March 22nd, on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. We've got something really special for you now. Our next trailer will be accompanied by a musical performance. Ooh, Clive and Carlack do karaoke. I was thinking we could do Eternal Flame this time. That sounds great. Oh, the producers are shaking their heads. They'll regret this at the rap party. Anyway, instead, we're throwing it over to LA for a special performance of Home to Home from the Haunty soundtrack. Oh, and look out for a release date announcement as well. We'll go into eighth note clicks at 41. One and two and three and four and... Thank you to everyone involved with that beautiful performance. Haunty is coming to PC, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, and Xbox on May 23rd, 2024. And you can watch the full reveal trailer on the FGS YouTube channel. Our next game follows a fiend called Beelzebub as they try to survive in a desert world ravaged by water shortage. Let's check out a brand new gameplay trailer for Sandland. Peggy 12. In 
boast the bright light of day and the long dark of night, I pledge to devote my entire being to and do all in my power for this great nation of forest land and you, its people. They're the Forest Land Army. The Forest Land Army is really something else. Starting off as the underdogs? Sounds like my kind of fight. Just you wait, Forest Land Army. I'm gonna need you to hand over that aquanium to me. General Crowa. Right is relative, after all. One person's right is another person's wrong. Demons are no match for the illustrious Rosetta Brigade. Listen, Rosetta, we can resolve this if you'll just talk to us. Keep your naive ideals in your diary. Aquanium. <laughs> Indeed it is. With this, our army will control the entire world. For the sake of those lives lost, for our great patriots, I must lead you back to the path of righteousness by ridding this world of demons. What? Is a match for the prince? Fiend prince, why do you lend these humans your strength? Forget about me. Keep the Aquanium safe. I don't go by Shiva anymore, though. Now, foul fiend. Better start begging before I run out of patience. He's not human. Munio is an angel. Sand. Okay. Sorry, that trailer was in um, 4D. Sandland is coming to PC, PlayStation, and Xbox on April 26th, 2024. This next trailer is for Space Prison, a game where you break out of a galactic complex by crafting contraband, brawling inmates, and raising an army of mutant rodents. ready to be king of the rats you better be because space prison is coming to pc on april the 10th 2024. now it's time to reopen the future game show ones to watch yearbook and hand out one of our prestigious badges our next entry is an open world smuggler's tale that will have you infiltrating wretched hives of scum and villainy From a galaxy far, far away, Star Wars Outlaws speeds its way into the pages of our future game show, Wants to Watch Yearbook. Let's jump! Outlaws is a third-person scoundrel simulator from open-world maestros Massive Entertainment. Known for spearheading Tom Clancy's The Division and last year's Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Pretty well, right? In the sacred timeline, Star Wars Outlaws sits between The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, and stars enterprising outlaw Kay Vess. Boasting an adorable alien companion, a droid bodyguard in a trench coat, and a customizable speeder bike, Vess sets out to become a household name in the underworld by planning heists and schmoozing with syndicates. So yes, you can expect a few uncomfortable audiences with Jabba the Hutt. Not the first time we've outrun the Empire. 
as well as engaging in gun and gadget fueled infiltration combat, which inevitably leads to high speed escapes. You'll dogfight in your ship, the Trailblazer, and explore the galaxy's cities, deserts, and hives. From Tatooine to Kijimi and the planets between, you'll score credits, smuggle goods, and make difficult choices to manage Kay's growing reputation. And her wanted level. Outlaws is coming to PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X sometime in 2024. But crucially, that means there's still time for you to draw up plans for how you'll play the galaxy's most notorious criminals off each other for your own selfish gain. But it's a big galaxy out there, and I'm gonna risk it all. We are delighted to welcome Star Wars Outlaws into our Once to Watch yearbook and we'll be bringing you more coverage on the Future Game Show YouTube channel as we move closer to the release date later this year. What's next, Ben? Ben? Oh no. Not this again. Help! Leave him alone. How dare you bully him? Only I get to bully him! Are we clear? Blockbuster Inc. lets you go behind the scenes and run your own movie studio, picking stars and setting scenes in a bid to sweep up the awards. I'm clearly going to be great at this one. Thank you, Sam. You're welcome. I didn't punch him. I really did not. From the worst cinematic nightmares. Oh, hi, Tom. Hi. To an unforgettable masterful cinematography. Please? Blockbuster Inc. Game where you make your dream movies come true. Create your own sets. Ooh, fancy. Make your dream movies. Even if they are a bit weird. Win prestigious awards in grand ceremonies. Nurture your movie stars. Navigate through the history of cinematography. Blockbuster Inc. Coming soon. Blockbuster Inc. is coming to PC on June the 6th, 2024. Switching gears, the developers of tropical sandbox adventure Cheer are here to reveal some exciting news about the future of the game. That's right, Chia launches today on Steam and is coming to Nintendo Switch this summer. And that's not all, existing players on PlayStation and Epic Games Store can check out the major game update too. 
We've got a closer look at Rumble Club now, a clumsy combat game that's a complete clobber fest. Try saying that ten times. Kinship. Brotherhood. Throughout time and antiquity, the building blocks of society have been based on democracy. Debate and compromise through peaceful deliberation, but sometimes there is no more powerful way to make a point than a punch to the face! <laughs> You know what we're Let's doing. Do it. Just land on Tectone and get him out. Whatever that was. No! Time no, to die, Amy. No! No! Oh, oh. No! I'm alive! Uh, I'm uh, alive. Help! Help! I'm getting ping pong. Tectone, please! Oh Let's go, go, baby! Rumble Club is coming to PC and mobile this April. Our next game has musical contributions from none other than Rick Astley. And we promise this isn't some elaborate bit. We wouldn't want to let you down like that. Yeah, we'd never tell a lie and hurt you. Mum! Oh, what is it? Are you sure we can't go back to our old house? You'll soon get used to it. Think of it as an adventure. And who might you be? I'm Simon. Don't you remember me? <sighs> Look here. This is a prequel. So what do you think I should do? The little miscreant have the nerve to steal from me. I demand to know who we're dealing with. <laughs> Come on, Simon. Get the magic books. Defeat the big evil wizard. Save the magic worlds. Easy, right? Simon the Sorcerer Origins is coming to PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, PC, Apple and Linux in 2024. So point and click it into your wish lists. Now, we know you love a good teaser. This again. Look, Ben, I know you were in a game with an active battle system, but this is a strictly turn-based production. Noted. I'll uh, follow the initiative from now on. Um, I'm just giddy about the next world premiere, which is a collaboration between two incredible forces of nature, kind of like us, Sam. Come on, what right. is this, guys? Right? Someone? Right? Do you know what I mean? It's a good gag. It's a funny joke. Why won't anyone laugh? Where did the laughter go? Why do we not laugh anymore? Project Mango is a collaboration between Tukana Interactive, developers of Dorf Romantic, and YouTube animation maestros Kortzgesagt in a nutshell. It's coming to Steam in 2025. Up next, we've got the latest update on Outpost Infinity Siege, a first-person shooter with base building and tower defense elements. It's over. Forget our old doomsday scenarios. In the end, our pride and avarice was to be our downfall. And yet, when evil reigns supreme, heroes rise up in defiance. They are the glimmer of hope within the encroaching darkness. 
Outpost core link established. Commencing synchronization. 20%. 50%. Outpost Infinity Siege is officially coming to Steam on March 26th. We're taking a trip to the Scottish Highlands now to hear the latest on Farewell North, an atmospheric puzzle adventure starring a border collie and its owner. Okay, Chesley. I think it's time. My heart's in Thank you for your help, Kelly. <coughs> oh, aye, and Mr. Chesley, of course. Pack your hiking gear because we're pleased to announce that Farewell North is coming to PC, Nintendo Switch and Xbox on August 15th. Our next game will have you praying to the gods for help as you take on hordes of Draugr in PvE combat. My name is Mark Jacobs. Uh, I am the CEO slash chief creative at uh, now Unchained Entertainment. We're currently working on three things, Final Stand Ragnarok, Camelot Unchained, and the Unchained Engine, which powers uh, the games that we're making now, the games we're going to make in the future, and also, of course, the name change. It's been a while for us to get where we are, but the key thing for us is we never gave up. And now we're at the point where not only is FSR ready to launch, but our engine can do things that no one else that we've seen so far is able to do. And what we wanted to do was large-scale battles, 500 or more people, 30 frames a second. My name is Michelle Davies. I'm art director at Unchained Entertainment, currently working on Final Stand Ragnarok. The really cool part about it and where its core is, it allows for many more entities than you see in other engines to give you that Helm's Deep. Final Stand Ragnarok, it is the few versus hordes, thousands of enemies. FSR is a hack and slash, Ruta slasher. It is meant to be fun and silly and snarky at times. You know, this is a game that doesn't try to take itself too seriously. We're also going to have what uh, we're calling First Look Fridays, where we're going to offer players a sneak peek at things like new scenarios, new champions, 
uh, modified scenarios. Hey, maybe we'll make this a little harder, or maybe instead of a thousand, you know, NPCs coming in a wave, we're going to make 500, make them a lot more powerful. We're going to try different things with them. No matter how well you thought things out, the players are going to have much more interesting things to say once they've played it. We want to see what they like, what they don't like. And the way FSR has been built, it is so easy for us to make changes, you know, in a scenario. Being able to do that real time with real players gives us such an edge in iteration. And certainly the scale is always going to be, you know, our um, strong suit. If you would like to experience what it feels like to be in that moment, the middle of Helm's Deep fighting the onslaught, uh, you're really going to like Final Stand Ragnarok. The goal right now is to launch on Steam uh, in March, PC of course, and then over the remainder of the year, we're going to be working uh, to get it at least on one of the consoles and launch fairly quickly uh, after that. Final Stand Ragnarok will launch on PC this month with console versions to come in the near future. It's time for the Ones to Play montage, which is where we cover a series of awesome games that will be available to play right after the show. Just head to the Future Game Show Steam page where you'll find all the featured demos in every game in today's broadcast. May your wish lists runneth over. First up is New Star GP, a rip-roaring retro racer with arcade sensibilities. And this is Realm of Ink, a mythological action roguelike where you call on the power of adorable ink pets. And here's Go Go Town, a cartoon sandbox where you rejuvenate a rundown city. Up next is Follow the Meaning, a peculiar point-and-click puzzler starring a detective with a delightful trilby. Angerfoot is sliding in now, a lightning-fast FPS that puts the kick into kick-ass. Or how about Duck Paradox, a disco-dancing bullet-hell platformer where you rescue your web-footed workmate. Rounding out the crew is Deathbound an action RPG where you combine the personalities of fallen warriors. And remember, all these games are available to play for free right after the show. Thanks to everyone who worked with us to provide a free demo for the Ones to Play section. And speaking of free games, why not take a look up here? If you're one of the people lucky enough to claim one of these, then you just got yourself access to a time-limited playtest of Go Go Town. So get Go Go going! And I suspect they're all Go 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 Gone now. So, here's a gameplay trailer for TerraTech Worlds, a multiplayer survival builder perfect for fans of Valheim and Satisfactory. Rev your engines, because TerraTech Worlds is coming to Steam Early Access on the 22nd of March, which is tomorrow. Time to slip on your dancing shoes now, as we've got a psychedelic rhythm shooter where you empty your clip to the beat. One, two, three, boom! Target acquired. Target's location. Working on. So many 
Productions. It can't be this easy. Ah, it wasn't this easy. I love a good remix. Robo Beat is coming to Steam and Epic Game Store on May 16th, 2024. So shoot it onto your wish lists. Also, a demo is available right now, so you can dive in after the show. Now, if you fancy yourself something of a contemporary Sherlock, this next game's for you. The operator has you analyzing evidence to solve impossible, sometimes improbable cases from behind a computer screen. Welcome to the FDI, Mr. Tanner. As our newest operator, your role is to support our agents in the field. Using cutting edge software, investigate mysterious crimes, dig for clues, and uncover the truth. Good luck. <laughs> The truth is out there. You just have to know where to look. The Operator is coming to PC in May 2024. Okay, it's time to jump into our ones to watch yearbook for the last time in the Spring Showcase. And this entry comes with a special treat. But just before we get into it, a little scare warning for those afraid of uh, mm, vicious storms uncertain circumstances, infestations of otherworldly horrors that slowly seek to destroy you and everything you hold dear, and the North Sea. <gasps> Emerging from sinister depths, the Chinese room's first-person psychological horror game Still Wakes the Deep has found a home in the future game show Wants to Watch Yearbook. From the narrative magicians behind Everyone's Gone to the Rapture and Amnesia, A Machine for Pigs, Still Wakes the Deep is a rich tome of terror that seeks to push your panic buttons. <laughs> Players step into the steel-toed shoes of an oil rig worker who must evade shrieking stalkers and look for answers in the isolating, labyrinthine halls of a 1970s drilling platform stranded in the North Sea. And to sate the appetites of our scare-hungry viewers, we've been working with the team to bring you a terrifying new trailer that will reveal when you can get your hands on it. I still can't believe you went. What are you thinking? Going to that place? Wish you hadn't got yourself into this mess, but you did. You can't run forever. I know you were just trying to do right by me, so I need you to do what's right by us. Now, please, Cass. Shit. I am so tired of fighting. I just want it to be over. I want you home. The girls want you home, but... If you don't deal with this, then we are done for good. I love you. But I won't wait forever. You heard it here first. Still Wakes the Deep is coming to PS5, Xbox and PC on June 18th. Let's look at Battle Crush now, a multiplayer action brawler where you fight like gods as the earth crumbles beneath your feet.
That was Battle Crush, and the second beta test begins today, March 21st, on Steam, Android, and iOS. It's hard to believe that we've got yet another world premiere coming up next. <gasps> so soon after the last one, that's more unlikely than a marble in Rosaria. To the architect, every idea starts with a single line, springing forth from our ambition and ending at the edges of our imagination. To them, an empty blueprint represents a world of possibilities. A world of dreams and doorways. That was your first look at Blue Prince, a strategic adventure game where you create the world you explore. It's coming soon to PC. All right, up next we've got an Unreal Engine 5 survivors like set in a world plagued by cosmic horrors. Here's Hordes of Hunger. Wish lists at the ready because Hordes of Hunger is coming to PC in 2024. Our next game is all about connecting blocks and controlling bots to climb the corporate ladder. Here's Linkito. Linkito invites you to connect on PC this summer. Hey, Sam, uh, before we get on to the uh, next trailer, I need to ask you something. Why does Carlac have a teddy bear called Clive? Hmm. Why does Ben have a teddy bear called Samantha? Ha. <laughs> I, I mean, I just, I told you that in confidence. Mm. Okay. okay, I'm gonna need some time. Well, that's okay, as we've got another dazzling world premiere up next. Let's roll that while I go sort him out. Peggy 18.
Sim City in hell. Kind of like living in the UK, right, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst. Worshippers of Cthulhu is worming its way onto PC in 2024. Our next game pairs Scottish folklore with a beautiful hand-drawn art style. Let's take a look at the heirloom. I know that the paranormal is real. Listen. <gasps> You can inherit the heirloom when it lands on PC, Xbox, PlayStation and Nintendo Switch later this year. Right. Here's a new trailer for Spine, a cinematic gun-fu brawler where you take down an oppressive regime with the help of a talking backbone. Guys, that's her! That bitch with the spine! Hello there. Holy shit, bro! She killed Tony! Fanatically optimistic. Piece of cake. It's starting to rain. Don't get your guns wet. Justice Department, down on the ground, don't move! Come at me, creep. Come on! Don't damage your spine. That's an order. Spine will be spin-kicking its way onto PC, PlayStation and Xbox in 2025. Moving on to something a little more sinister, we've got the latest update on Indica, a psychological puzzle game where you play as a rogue nun. Please, talk to me this one time. How did I go against you? Is it in my power to intervene in your design? Is this a part of your plan? supposed to be. He will be all right. Ilya will live. You can see I'm trying. He's always behind my shoulder.
Befriending a demon. Tiefling! Tiefling! Like, how many times do I have to tell you? Ben, it's a tiefling! It's different from a demon! <sighs> Hasn't gone so badly for me. That was Indica, which is coming to PC in Q2 2024. I hate to break it to you, Ben, but this next one is our last trailer. It is a super cool world premiere, though, which takes the sting out of saying goodbye. <laughs> I'm deeply sad about this, but somehow that feeling is being slowly usurped by the promise of a new video game to look at. Curious. You want the truth, my liege? Peace is a fairy tale. Something you tell young rats to stifle the nightmares. It's high time you woke up, for the nightmare is upon us. As war raged in the south, a terrible evil stirred in the north, endlessly clawing from one year to the next, until finally free of its frost-bound imprisonment. You think you know suffering? You know nothing, my liege. Wings black as death, fangs sharp as steel, and a thirst for vengeance that will not sate. There's a time for heroes. That time is over. The kingdom needs a warrior. Forged of the north, and as cold as the snow that shrouds these lands. A rat. Carved from iron. Red for battle. And unleashed in war. And so, a new tale begins. Tales of iron, too. Whiskers of winter. Wish list now. <laughs> that was your first peek at Tales of Iron 2 Whiskers of Winter, which is coming to PC, PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch in 2024. But with that, we will have to bid you all adieu. Sam, I can, fe I can feel you laughing and smiling uncomfortably, why? Uh, nothing, it's just, <laughs> well, it's not nothing actually. Um, it's not the end of the show because we have another trailer. It's like a one more thing thing, you know, all the big showcases do it apparently. Right, and you, uh, you just kept this to yourself the whole time. You know, we've been, <laughs> um, we've been emailing about this and we've been like Amazing. rehearsing it and I just, I feel like I'm I, I know, I know, and best of all, it's another world premiere. Gotcha. No, not gotcha, Sam. You've embarrassed me. Gotcha. No, Sam. Gotcha. Not gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Not gotcha. gotcha. Don't go, gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. 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 Gotcha.
That was Industria 2, which is coming soon to PC. So make sure it's on your wish lists. And no, no more funny business. That really was our final trailer of the show. For real this time. It's been an absolute pleasure, Sam. Likewise, Ben. But before we make good on our karaoke promise, we'd like to thank everyone for tuning in wherever you are. Uh, we'd also like to shout out the people behind the scenes who've made this spring showcase a reality and our partners over at PAX. Remember to head over to the dedicated Future Game Show Steam page to add the games we've covered to your wish lists. Finally, just before we go, we'd like to take a moment to recognise what a difficult period it has been and continues to be in the games industry, with countless layoffs and a growing fog of uncertainty, somehow coupled with headline news about huge profits. We simply couldn't have a show like this full of awesome trailers and demos and presentations without the hardworking people who turn such inspired ideas into reality. The makers of this show and both Ben and I we want to acknowledge just how difficult it's become to work and feel supported in this industry. So for everyone out there weathering this storm, regardless of what you do, we just want to say that we see you, we're thinking of you, and we truly hope that things are going to get better. So please support your favourite games and the people who make them in whatever way you can. I'm Ben Starr. And I'm Samantha Bayard. And this, and this has, has been, been the Future, Future Game, Game Show Spring Showcase 2024. But, 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 hold on a minute. Don't touch that dial. Whilst we're leaving you for Pastures New, the Future Game Show expansion pack is up next, which features developer interviews and even more world premiere. It's just 60 seconds away, so we probably don't have time to entertain you good people during the interim. I mean, the auto cue's blank, so... Uh, maybe I just, um, should I just, uh, I'll just, I'll start getting undressed now. Oh, God, every Give time. the people what they want. Want, Sam, give the people what they want. Everybody and welcome to the Future Game Show Expansion Pack. Thank you very much to Sam and Ben for passing the torch so graciously and for absolutely smashing it as hosts. I'm Jules from the Future Game Show YouTube channel and I'm joined by my fellow FGS host Nathan Hello. and supremely pure and awesome content creators Koji and Harry, who I'm also legally contracted to say are beautiful people as well. Yeah. Hello, I am Koji, the supremely pure content creator. Um, I'm a variety streamer and content creator. I am playing a lot of horror lately. I'm really into horror. It's kind of a passion of mine. I just uh, really like to feel something, you know? <laughs> I do very similar things to Koji, except I don't really touch anything horror. I'm far too scared, but I do a lot of variety content on Twitch. That is where me and Koji met and became friends. And I'm very excited to see some more games that we'll get to eventually play on stream too. Now, I bet you thought that you'd seen everything we had to offer today, but that is not the case. Because here on the Future Game Show Expansion Pack, we're going to dig deeper into some of the most exciting games featured in the Spring Showcase. And along the way, we're going to be chatting to some special guests, we're going to be speaking to some awesome developers, and we might even have a world premiere or two for you, but only if we're good. So to kick things off, let's follow up on that Still Wakes the Deep release date trailer you caught during the show. Here's footage from when we took a trip to the studio to check in with the developers making this sinister North Sea horror game. Ooh. Still Wakes the Deep is the game I joined the Chinese room to make. Still Wakes the Deep is a horror game set on a North Sea oil rig in 1975, where you have to survive an unknowable horror that comes on board. 
Our main character is Cameron McCleary, an ex-boxer from Glasgow who's in trouble with the law and has run away to sea. However, his problems are catching up with him and in the middle of that, these extraordinary events happen. This is the next step in the Chinese Room's mission to make the best narrative experiences. It's always a pleasure to work in one environment as a whole play space. This was the first thing I started to work on. It focuses the mind of the player because it makes them feel like they are isolated, that they are on their own in the middle of the North Sea. The feel of being in one single environment that you walk through, that you explore, that you gradually open up and that you come to exist in, in such a way that when you finish playing the game, I hope that people still feel after playing, I'm still on that oil rig. I still remember it. Our oil rig, the Bearer D, has many antecedents in fiction, such as the Ishimura from Dead Space, the ship in Event Horizon. It is effectively a metal spaceship hovering above the cold North Sea. In such a small environment, there's a risk that the player will get bored or familiar, over familiar with the environment. So to address that, we make sure that the rig evolves over time. As the event progresses, the rig starts to shake and crack and crumble. It starts to sink, it starts to tilt, and it starts to flood. We had a great opportunity to work with Jason Graves, who's our composer. The most brilliant thing that Jason has brought to the project is his rig instrument. So this is a metal sculpture that he commissioned that looks like an oil rig, that he plays like a musical instrument. He strums it and plucks it and drags things over it to create these horrendous groaning sounds of metal, which he then slows down. And this is the soundtrack to the rig. These are the sounds that you hear as you move over it as this kind of hulking metal beast groans and wails above the waves. And we're so pleased with the oral atmosphere that he's created for us. It's just exceptional. When you've been working on a game for a number of years, it's nerve wracking to see it being revealed to the public. The best thing for me was to see people's excitement about the concept of the game, about a horror game set on an oil rig, just like we had that spark of excitement when we first set out to make Still Wakes the Deep. So our latest trailer for Still Wakes the Deep shows a little bit more about the game. We're trying not to spoil too much, but you can finally know the date which you're gonna get your hands on the game. Still Wakes the Deep releases on Xbox Series X, Series S, PlayStation 5, PC and Game Pass in June. Well, uh, thank you very much to the Chinese Room for that fantastic insight into the development of Still Wakes the Deep. I mean, what do you guys think of that? Absolutely terrifying. I mean, the thing about the Chinese Room, I think, is every single game of theirs has a premise, like an elevator pitch that straight mm -hmm. away you're like, I want to play that. You know, yeah. Dear Esther, everybody's gone to the Rapture, yeah. and now this. I, I feel like it's just so unique. No one else would be like, we're making a game, it's Christmas Day, it's the 70s, you're on an oil rig, you're playing a middle-aged Scottish man, go. I, uh, no, I'm so excited for it. Koji, as, as a, a horror streamer, what do you think? I think it just looks perfect. It's like my ideal horror game in the sense that it looks like it's much more like constant tension, like mm -hmm. you're always on the edge of your seat rather than just like yeah. a jump scare and then nothing. You're like always like thriving, like what's coming next. And this, the sounds, like I felt like okay. even just watching the trailer, I'm like, yeah. these sounds are yeah. like troubling me. <laughs> Give me more. I feel like the fact that it's set on an oil rig as well, like in the North Sea, I don't know if you guys have seen recently, there's been a lot of content online about the North Sea and people are kind of discovering it as this like, really terrifying place. So I feel like it's gonna gather an audience of people that have been watching those videos that really want to play it and experience it. For myself personally, I'm absolutely terrified of anything to do with the sea and just horror yeah. games in general. I but it's I, a very specific fear yeah, yeah. though, isn't it? Do you want <laughs> it to is. see what this fear is? I think, okay, so anything that's like takes place in the sea, but specifically things in my peripheral vision when I'm like looking around in the water, like Subnorska could not oh, get no, off I the get beginning it. raft. I do get that, yeah. I accidentally called an ambulance playing Subnorska for the first time. Um, so I know we've that all this been there. is... Yeah, we've all <laughs> <been>. <laughs> yeah, it's something we've all done right, guys. Um, but I know this is going to be a game that my community are definitely going to want to see me play. Um, I'm very excited to watch other people play it for sure because I know that this is just going to terrify 
the living hell out of me. Well, you can watch Koji play it. Because exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll watch his stream first. I, speaking of the fact that the setting, it being in the 70s, I love the fact that they have shown this to be as a reason why you can't immediately escape this horrifying situation. Like, the technology just wasn't up to scratch. It's set at Christmas Day, so there's going to be less, like, accident and responding uh, teams ready to go. And the fact is, the oil rig doesn't look like it's in the best possible shape to begin with. And the fact that we were just told then that it's going to be collapsing around you yeah. so that every time you go back through certain areas, there's new elements. Yeah. It reminds me of that time in Resident Evil when the dog jumps through that window. And let me tell you, I'm still thinking about it right now. So I'm probably going to be sleeping or not sleeping when uh, Still Wakes the Deep comes out. The setting looks beautiful, though. Like, I was looking at some of the videos and stuff of it and just like, inside the oil rig and outside the oil rig just looks incredible. Like the ocean looks way too realistic. Yeah, I just, I yeah. could not go anywhere near that, so. And we don't have long to wait now in any case because remember that date, folks. Still Wakes the Deep launches in June on PC, PlayStation and Xbox. But what's up next, Joe? Well, my friends, I promised you a world premiere, didn't I? So let's make good on that by bringing you one right now. So there we go, Nights in Tight Spaces is coming to PC in 2024. Make sure it is on your wish list. But before we head back to our panel, let's dive deep into another game that should be bouncing around your memory banks after the spring showcase. Dustborn is a neo-Western adventure game where you do battle much like me chucking a dictionary at somebody with the power of words. And you know what? If you are at PAX East right now, I have great news for you because you can play the demo for Dustborn on the show floor. But if you sadly can't uh, make it to Boston in the next, let me just check my watch, uh, 76 hours, here is a walkthrough of that very demo with narration from developers Red Thread Games. 2030, in North America, you play Pax, a 30-something anomal. Looking for a way out, you're offered a life-changing opportunity. All you have to do is steal and deliver a mysterious package across the country. Joined by a crew with their own peculiar powers, you will explore an alternate America on a robot-driven tour bus, embark on a perilous road trip, and try to stay out of trouble to reach your final destination. I'll give it to you, Theo. This is, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Primitive. Rustic. Cozy. Cozy's the word. Dustborn is all about the crew. Their unique powers, complex relationships, and personal stories. The crew grows as you recruit new people along the way, and each of them has a special skill or power that can be of use to Pax. You need to do something. She's freaking out. What do we do? Gnome's ability to read people's emotions and influence them. Just listen to my voice. You'll be fine. Sai. What? Hold the bus up. Sai's super strength. That always comes in handy. Shit, that's heavy. And Theo's non-supernatural software skills. The network's down. Got it. Luna, system's rebooted. Welcome to the castle. How was the trip? Um, maybe you should handle this one, Theo. Uh, guys, guys! This trip won't be all butterflies and rainbows. The people you stole the package from... Fuck that! Let's just go! They want it back. You can't follow us into the DMZ. But won't the Republic border guards wonder why a punk rock band on a tour bus is being pursued by Puritans? I've been hailed by Justice Border Patrol. I'm required to stop the vehicle. Oh, fuck! We'll soon find out. Good afternoon, officer. 
Your purpose for entering the Republic? We're a band. A band? Everybody off the bus. Uh, what do we even play? We haven't practiced! Whenever you're ready. One, two, three, four! Your name? The Dustborn. From official gigs you're booked for to unexpected border checks. Perform to the best of your abilities to not raise suspicions about your travel motives. Write new songs and practice on the road to maintain your cover. That was great. But road trips are full of surprises and unexpected encounters, and you won't get away without picking some fights. So don't forget to pack your baseball bat. Girl power. Use vocal powers to talk your way out of hairy situations and call in some of your crew to help you. Still. They'll always have your back, as long as you have theirs. No road is long with good company. You'll meet new people along the way, allowing you to expand your crew and possibilities. Use your time at the campfire to weave strong relationships with each of them, whether it strengthens the cohesion of the team. This is good for all of us, and we get to do it together. That's the best part. Or hurts it. Meh. Depending on your choices, each crew member gets their own coda that impacts their state of mind and answers. No, I didn't. And sometimes, even the course of action. Where the dust is this road trip through America will be full of challenges. So pack your bags and hop in. You might not end up where you intended to go, but you'll end up where you intended to be. Thank you to Red Thread Games for sharing that Dustborn demo with the folks at home. Now, Nathan, it looks like you have some new friends alongside you, so let us introduce Alan and Nads from Melanin Gamers. Welcome to the panel, to the expansion pack. How are you? We're fine, thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, Not a problem. Why don't you tell the people at home about Melanin Gamers? Oh, fantastic. We can probably take this together. But uh, my name is Alan from Melanin Gamers, like you said before. And we are a gaming community and a consultancy within the gaming industry. And we try to do our best to promote diversity and inclusion within the gaming industry, oh, from okay. asset creation to policies within the industry is the shortest form I can give it. That's amazing. <laughs> and you guys have worked together quite a lot then uh, during the course of this. We have. We are rivals, I would, is the best way to describe <laughs> it. Now we are. <laughs> we're, we're Some may say enemies. Like, yes. yes. I heard enemies. mention of a Mortal Kombat tournament. <laughs> that is what we don't talk about. <laughs> But yes, at least we can all agree on one thing and that Dustborn is here. You guys have actually had hands-on time with Dustborn at different stages of development. So how have you found the experience of playing it? I really enjoyed it. I like the fact that each character has their own kind of set abilities and it really fleshes out a character in that kind of way. So like depending on your play style, it depends on the kind of characters you might fall in love with during the during the campaign. Okay. So and also because it's from Quantic Dreams, you're gonna we're gonna find a lot of like narrative elements in there and they're masterful when it comes to telling stories. The combat of it in general has completely stuck with me because mm. the whole point of using your own words as your main source of weaponry mm. and I kind of relate it back to my daily lifestyle. So <laughs> do I be my nice normal self or do I be this rude fake person? I'm gonna go with number two. And coming from a place where you're kind of looking at representation in games, uh, you know, it was a really great kind of core cast of characters as well. It felt like you were seeing a lot of different representation. Precisely. There. That is one of the things that we really like to champion, where we yeah. see a character really being fleshed out and not just being one dimensional. Mm. And when it comes to games like this, and when it comes to Quantic Dreams and the way they craft the story tell, um, storytelling, storytelling when it comes to their, to their craft, it's really, really, nice to see like an entire character being fleshed out in that kind of way especially in it's set in a, like an alternate american reality yeah. so mm. just seeing that is going to be really interesting going forward all right it's time to dig into another all new trailer here's a closer look at dystopica the cyberpunk city builder of your electric dreams
Well, now Dystopica is coming out in 2024 and you can wish list it now on Steam. I, for one, am very excited about that game because it reminds me of Cardiff. Very smoggy. Now, Eagle Eye viewers may have noticed that there are a few new faces sitting beside Nathan. So many new friends today. Oh, yes, too, right, Jules. It's my pleasure to welcome Jack Bennett from Oddbug Studios and Doug Cockle, the voice of Geralt of Rivia himself. <laughs> They're here to talk about Tales of Iron 2, Whiskers of Winter. Hello, I How's it going, guys? It's going great. Thank it's you so nice to have you here. Thanks I mean, time. the trailer that we have just witnessed here, yeah. boys, fantastic, brutal, beautiful. There are so many things going on here, but the top of my list of questions is, what was it like making a sequel to this, 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 this game? Your first sequel for the studio, isn't it? Yeah, well, it is our first sequel, and it was an intense experience. Like, Tales of Iron is a, the first Tales of Iron is a game within a big world, so mm -hmm. we knew we wanted to go in the sequel route and expand on that, but it was just bringing together what people wanted from us while still being true to Tales of Iron, which was the challenge, but I think we've done that, and I think the trailer still feels very Tales of Iron. Oh, yeah, I was sure. blown away from it because it was like, that's a lot of violence going on here, <laughs> and I am definitely here for it, especially seeing as now I know that Doug is going to be narrating it once more again. I mean, how did it feel to come back around to tell even more tales of brutalism? It's been amazing. I was thrilled to be asked the first time. Uh, when I was first asked to do Tales of Iron 1, um, one of the key things that got me involved was looking at the art. They sent me some, yeah, of the, yeah. some of the art for the game, and that just that sold me straight away. I was just like, yeah, I'm in. I want to do this game. This looks brilliant. So when they told me that Tales of Iron 2 was coming around the bend, I was like, I can't wait. <laughs> Sign me up. I want to be in it. <laughs> it must be rare from a developer's perspective to be approached and say, like, I want to be in it, rather than we have to uh, fight for you to come back into it. So yeah, and it's going to be amazing to hear oh, your voice. Really but mm. it does lead on to the question of what the narrative of this game is going to be like, because obviously things don't seem to be going all too well for our heroes this time around. Mm. So how have you, have you moved the narrative along to yeah. continue this story? So. It's, it's uh, after a sequel, so it's after the, the events of Tales of Iron 1, uh, and obviously a lot of characters disappeared for Tales of Iron 1, and that's a big part of the Tales of Iron genre, is we're very heavily influenced by a sort of Game of Thrones, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. nobody's safe, I would say, <laughs> is, a, is, a, is a good thing. Uh, but with this one, it's like a new enemy from the past that everyone now has realised has resurged, sort of thing, these dark wings, and Arlo is kind of the Warden of the North, mm -hmm. he has this like smaller keep out in the outskirts, but something we've really tried to do in this game is bring in other races, so it's not just rats and frogs and moles from the first game, it's like we've got owls, we've got oh, fish people, we've got all sorts of new creatures, and Arlo kind of brings them together in a more unified system. I love that concept because they all would bring something unique to the table, probably have yeah. unique perspectives yeah. on this uh, growing war that's around them. Yeah. And is that going to play into the actual gameplay itself in terms of choices you make? or in terms of the combat, having to call on allies? So there's not choices, but there are a lot of buddies. So you, you interact with a lot of characters in the world, you're bringing them to your sort of keep to rebuild your winter's edge that you live in. So you kind of see these different cultures coming together and they've all got sorrows and happinesses and things mm -hmm. they want to happen. And we slowly piece that together through the story that hopefully everyone's happy in. Yeah. Can I just say, you've also built in some really beautiful twists into the storyline. It's uh, out with like re recording some of the lines. I was like, whoa, no way. <laughs> can't do that. <laughs> so, I'm not yeah, saying that. It's... I'm not saying it. Not of that character. Most. <laughs> well, seeing as we've got you in the hot seat right now, what's your top tips for people looking forward to this game? Can you give us a little sliver of knowledge? I, I would say maximise your elemental damages. That would be a good way to go. Read the beastry to make sure you're using oh, the right good. elements. Uh, and just watch your enemy. Watch the enemy <laughs> because they will come at you with fire and brimstone, so please uh, watch them and react efficiently. With I hope that the beast story is obviously narrated by Doug as well, so I can get even more of him 24-7. If I could just have you walking around and narrating my life, that'd be quite nice as well. Just we can arrange there. that. Yeah, yeah also, we'll, we'll, we'll talk after the show. But thank you so much. I hate to wrap this up, but we do need to move on then. Thank you both for coming in and showing oh, yeah, us exactly more good. about this. But why don't you tell the good people at home when Tales of Iron 2 is coming out? So Tales of Iron 2 will be out in 2024, so this year. It'll be out on Steam, Xbox, PlayStation and Switch. So if you want to learn more, just follow us on X at, at Oldpug Studio. Indeed, indeed. There we have it, my friends. Why don't you scurry over and add this to your wish lists? We've got another trailer coming up next. Here's the latest on Nexus 5X, which right up until this very second was called Stellaris Nexus. But that's right, the name has changed. Live on air, paradigm well and truly shifted. And it is happening 
happened in the studio too because my name has now officially been changed to Doug. So don't worry <laughs> okay. though, Sorry, regardless Doug. of the new name change, it is still the same snappy social strategy game where you vie for galactic dominance. Now let's find out more, shall we? Yes, please. Hi all, so last night the team and I, we got into some heavy 4Xing. If you've never 4 x before, those Xs can get pretty intense. You explore, exploit, and then you expand until you exterminate. We started at like 6pm, but by the time I got home, it was 3 in the morning and I was 4 x out of my mind. I thought I'd gotten away with it though, but somehow, my mum found out. Why you treat me so bad? How many times have I warned you about the dangers of getting 4 x your father would get for X like this, and look what happened to him. I felt really bad letting my mum down like that, so I called Adam. This is Adam. Hi. Don't even worry about it, Dax. I've been doing some research, and 4X is done. It's over. We're going to take 4X to the next level. Hang on, what? Wait, Adam, you don't mean... That's right. We're taking it to 5X. Adam, can we please have a peaceful game between us? Uh, you leave my nebulas, then we'll have peace. I am the explorer. I will be exploring all of those nebulas. Survey vessel en route. Oh my God, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Never trust Sam, just ever. A new planet has joined your empire. You what? Nexus 5X brings all of the deep strategy, diplomatic intrigue, and interstellar space battles of a full fat sci-fi 4X, but played start to finish in about an hour. So much salt <laughs> in this game. I've had Nexus stolen off me twice. <laughs> The full 1.0 launch of Nexus 5X, coming to Steam, April 18. So, Stellaris Nexus is now called Nexus 5X, and it's coming to PC on April the 19th, 2024. Time for a developer diary now, and this one constitutes a closer look at Moon Studios' No Rest for the Wicked. Let's pass it over to the team to learn more about the studio's visceral take on the action RPG. Hey, I'm Thomas Mahler, I'm the creative director at Moon Studios. Hey, I'm Gennady, and I'm a production and technical director, and both of us are the founders of Moon. We are working on a new project, which is called No Rest for the Wicked. It's the biggest uh, thing we've ever tried to achieve. It's the most ambitious one. It's something we've been working up to since 2016. We're full steam ahead, making sure we're ready for uh, early access launch, and also going to be working a lot on this game <laughs> for many, many years to come. <laughs> We want to do something completely different where we give the player ultimate control over their character. It should be super precise, right? So that you can do things like, oh, if an enemy swings his sword, right? I can jump back. I can precisely time that so that he misses me by one pixel. That's why we change the controls and everything. It's a very intuitive thing for us as well of just, I don't think we would want it any other way, especially with all the verticality that we have in the game, you know, jumping and climbing and it's it's a very different level design compared to uh, just any other action RPG, and it's it's much more Metroidvania. It's much more of you know creating these shortcuts, creating these interconnected moments, having something that you can really get lost in in a good way. And with a point and click model, how do you really make that natural? You know, how do you make that convenient? I think it would be very very difficult, and it just doesn't fit our DNA. Our combat system is very similar to how a Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat and so on would work. Meaning that we have a timeline, we actually figure out, hey, what are the um, actions that we want to perform, right? And then we tell our animators, hey, make me uh, an animation that does this. And then we have to chop it all up, right? And kind of like understand, hey, on this frame, this has to happen. Then on this frame, this has to happen. Then on this frame, this has to happen, right? And we have hundreds, if not thousands of moves and so on in the game. Um, so that's extremely laborious, but you need that kind of precision 
um, if you want to pull off this kind of this kind of combat, right? The animations really have to matter. You have to let the animation basically drive everything. Hopefully, like I think the players will absolutely love that we went through this crazy thing of like making sure every weapon is unique. The combat is a lot more advanced, a lot more tactical. Every single move is a lot more meaningful, and there is a really beautiful uh, skill progression that the player can feel. Uh, you know, it's not just the character progression and loot progression, uh, RPG progression, um, and you know, upgrading the weapons, getting better stats with weapons, getting better stats for your character, getting better stats for your town, because you know, the town building aspect in this game is basically your own extra character that you can progress. But it's really about also feeling that your skill is improving and getting that very, very nice kick of satisfaction of knowing that, oh, now I know how to walk around this boss and I've figured out that I can actually just run uh, to the side instead of having to roll all the time or spam the rolls or I can find these openings a lot better or I understand how I can use the additional combos coming out of a roll or coming out of the roll attack or using these specials. And um, all of that creates this depth where you're maxing out the game, not only in, on the numbers level, which is what ARPGs are, are really good at, but it's also creating an addictive loop on a mechanics level and maxing out that progression of, I am a badass, I'm getting better at this game, I'm, I'm learning and I'm improving. And I think that is a very addictive combination. No Rest for the Wicked is coming to early access on Steam on April 18th. How beautiful does that game look? I mean, I got some early hands-on access to No Rest for the Wicked last week, and I cannot wait to get my grubby little hands on the full thing. But Harry, does this look like the sort of game you're going to play day one? 100%, Good, yeah. I'm, I'm very much a fan of kind of dungeon crawler-esque, top-down games. Um, I've also heard this one has kind of done away with the whole point to click move as well, which is I know is a big factor that yeah. puts some people off of kind of top down games. I played a lot of RuneScape in my day and that Classic. is like a point, yeah. point to click. Um, and a lot of, I've tried to get friends into games like that and they're always like, no, I don't, I don't like the point to click aspect. So this is gonna be a game and I know it has co-op. I'm definitely gonna be convincing my friends to all get it and play it with me. But the yeah. pursuit for loot, obviously what was highlighted there, does seem to have come with a bit of a twist because obviously if the items are randomly generated or change each time in, like don't spec for a sp certain build, come yeah. into it with a mindset of, I will grab whatever I need to sort of make it through. How does that make you feel? Because I know that planning I, builds and planning runs. Personally, I think that for me, that's like the greatest thing. Because for me, my the most enjoyment comes out of a game when I'm entirely new and I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. So I'm just grabbing everything and I'm trying everything mm -hmm. instead of like strictly trying to follow like I'm going to be this build and character so yeah. I can only use these things. For me using everything is like the funnest part and just trying to figure it all out. Good. I mean the fact that it's so beautiful to look at as yeah. well. Oh, like the soundtrack as well is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And the best part of all of it is, is that our friend Nathan here has done yes. some uh, little early tips and tricks in the special video that's wow. actually on the FGS YouTube channel right now. So make sure you check that out if this game is no. of interest to Close you. Close this video now. No, 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 no. <laughs> Close it now. No, no. Go and watch <laughs> that this one. Is, this man's not speak for the rest of the expansion pack, but No Rest for the Wicked is coming to Steam early access on April the 18th. Yeah, and just before we go, I know you're already missing Clive and Carlac, aren't we all? Don't worry. So we've got a very special treat for you up next. Before the Spring Showcase, we had Ben and Sam sit down to interview each other and, <laughs> well, let's just say it was chaos. So here's a trailer to give you a taste of the hijinks that they got up to. We are going to be interviewing each other, for better or for worse. Here we go. Ready? Let's do it. What video game or TV show defined your childhood? Oh, Lord. That's a very long story, which I'll try and tell very quickly. Do your best impression of the other person's most iconic role. <clears throat> You're not going to go mental again, are you? It's not good. <laughs> and I was like, oh! Oh! I don't know why you were naked, but you were. So I do know why he's naked in that scene. I, I found that Hellraiser was better than the Care Bears movie. It's heresy. I don't care. It is very tasty. You just see a lot of like sexy, sweaty ribs. <laughs> it was yeah. kind of like Zelda. Yeah. It, it, it was nothing like Zelda. <laughs> wow. There! <laughs> Shout out by the police. Suddenly went, blah, 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 blah. I said, how stupid can I go on this? And they said, as stupid as you possibly can. And how stupid did you go? <gasps> oh boy. <laughs> I have a bone to pick with Remedy. 
controversial. Maybe, maybe not. I blame Sam Lake for this. This will only be sorted out when Ben and I have a leading role in the next game. Thank you so much, Sam. And here you are now. Here I am now. It's quite cool, though. It's pretty cool, yeah. I must sound naked. Yeah. Should we go? Yes, please. Okay. Ooh, and that uh, delightful video will debut on the FGS YouTube channel next week. So why not subscribe now to make sure you don't miss it. Plus, if you do that, you'll stay up to date with all of our antics as well. I have a weekly deep cut laden list series and Nathan, he gets up on that soapbox, all oh, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm always moaning about something. But anyway, that just about wraps up our first future game show expansion pack. We hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for tuning in. And of course, thank you to all our special guests. Thank Thank you for having yeah, us. Thank it's you. Been it's fantastic. been a pleasure. Yeah. Plug those socials. Yeah. Tell people <laughs> where they can find you. On Twitch, my handle is just Harry, H-A-R-R-I-E, and everything else is Harry Silver and Koji. Yeah, on Twitch, I'm just Koji, K-O-J-I, and everywhere else is Koji's Revenge on, on all socials. Good thank thing. you so much for joining us here today. Oh, and if you want to add any of the games that we have covered today to your ever-expanding wish list, then just type in the Future Games Show onto Steam and find our dedicated page. You'll also be able to rewatch any of the featured trailers on the FGS YouTube channel and read all about this year's Spring Showcase on gamesradar.com. That's a website. Well, my friends, that is a wrap. See you in the summer for the next expansion pack. See ya. See ya. Bye. Bye.